Welcome back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. Last week uh, we introduced the discrete Fourier transform, but that's not enough if we really want to understand it uh, deeper and if we really want to understand how it behaves when we deal with uh, sounds. This is what we will be doing this week. In these uh, theory uh, lectures, we'll be introducing the properties of the discrete Fourier transform. In this uh, first one, we will talk about four properties, linearity, shift, symmetry, and convolution. So let's start. Uh, linearity is a very convenient property of many mathematical operations, in this case of the DFT. It basically means that it's a well-behaved uh, operation. If we start with the linear combination of two signals, x1, x2, then in the spectral domain, in the frequency domain, it also corresponds to the linear combination of the spectrum of the individual signals that uh, we put in. And it's very easy to prove. If we start with the DFT of this uh, sum of these two signals, x1, x2, uh, we can see easily that we can group, we can separate this summatory into two sums, one for uh, a x1 and another for b x2. So basically we are computing two DFTs and since the scalar values do not depend on n, we can put them outside the sum and therefore we will get the small a multiplied by the DFT of x sub 1 plus b multiplied by the DFT of x sub 2. And we can exemplify this uh, with uh, two real uh, signals. If we start with a signal x1 that has a given amplitude and frequency and another signal x2 which is also sinusoid with a given amplitude and frequency, we can compute the DFT of these two signals separate. So we can see the magnitude spectrum, the absolute value of signal x1 and the magnitude spectrum of the signal x2 and um, we can sum the two so on the left plot we can see the sum of the two magnitude spectra but if we had computed the DFT of the sum of these two sinusoids the result would be the same so the DFT of summing the x1 and F x2 is the same than having some the two DFTs. And this is basically a result of the linearity property of the DFT. Let's go to another uh, property, the shift one. Uh, shifting means displacing samples of a signal. And in the DFT uh, case, it means that if we shift the samples in the time domain signal, we shift x n by n0 samples, in the spectral domain it corresponds to having the spectrum of the signal x k and then multiplied by a complex exponential. And again it's easy to prove if we start with uh, the DFT of this shifted signal, uh, then we can uh, change variables and uh, if we change uh, n minus n sub 0 and give it uh, the name m, we will see that then we can, uh, we can split this complex exponential into two complex exponentials, one that is uh, m and the other which is uh, minus n sub 0. And therefore then we can see that we have a DFT of the signal x m and it becomes a, a complete DFT of just the signal x and then we have this complex exponential that has the, the um, n sub 0 value that does not depend on m so it becomes separate and therefore the result is that we have this complex exponential multiplying the spectrum of the signal x. And we can see an example of that too. Uh, so here we see two signals x1, x2 and one is the shifted version of the other one. x2 has uh, two samples uh, shifting applied to x1 
by the way this is a sawtooth one period of a sawtooth uh, waveform and then if we take the DFT of these uh, two signals we see that their magnitude spectra the absolute value of the magnitude spectra is exactly the same there is no difference and this is because the complex exponential that multiplies the spectrum does not affect the magnitude spectrum the magnitude but the phase spectrum is definitely different this uh, we have two uh, lines that have different slope and this is because the multiplication by the complex exponential in the spectrum affects the phase value but not uh, the magnitude value okay so this is uh, an exemplification of this shifting uh, property of the DFT. Now let's talk about uh, symmetry. Uh, and, and in the DFT we have a whole bunch of symmetries uh, and that's good. Uh, they are going to be very useful for uh, many uh, uh, operations that we'll be doing. So for example if we start with a real signal which is uh, the type of uh, signals that we'll be dealing with then if we take the DFT of that real signal, the, the, the real part of the complex spectrum is going to have an even symmetry. And the imaginary part of the spectrum will have an odd symmetry. And then if we look at it from uh, the polar representation of the spectrum, we will see that the magnitude spectrum has an even symmetry and the phase spectrum has an odd symmetry. And then if we look at another type of signal, a signal that is also real but at the same time is even, has an even symmetry itself, the, the time domain signal, then if we compute the DFT of that, then we will see that the real part of the spectrum has an even symmetry and the imaginary part is all zeros. And then again, if we look at from the polar uh, representation, then we see that the magnitude spectrum has the same even symmetry and the phase spectrum is all zeros. And we can see it from this example, in which we start from a triangle. A triangle is a, an even uh, function, and of course it's a real function in this case. And we see these symmetries. We see that the real uh, value of the spectrum is uh, even, and the imaginary part is all zeros and the absolute value is, uh, is uh, even and the angle is all zeros. And we can uh, show these uh, symmetries also in real signals. This is uh, the sound of a, of a soprano, of a, of a vocal uh, sound that uh, we can hear. Okay, so if we take a fragment of this uh, voice uh, sound, we see that the spectrum in polar coordinates, looking at the magnitude and the phase, uh, can uh, displays these symmetries. The magnitude spectrum displays this even symmetry. The right part is exactly the same than the uh, left part around zero, so that's a perfect mirror. And the phase has this odd symmetry, which might not be as easy to, to visualize, but clearly we see that the right part is uh, kind of inverted with respect to the left part. So this is this odd symmetry. And to finish, uh, I want to uh, talk about the property that relates with convolution. Um, so it basically says that if we convolve two signals uh, in the time domain, uh, two time domain signals, then in the spectrum domain it corresponds to the product of the two corresponding uh, spectrum of the two signals. And again, it's quite easy to prove. If we start from the DFT of this uh, convolution of these two signals, and then we uh, put the, the, the equation for the convolution, then we can separate the variable uh, x sub 1 that just uh, relate with m and then x2 which has n and m but this second part is basically the DFT of a shifted signal of x2 being shifted so as we uh, just explained uh, the shifted uh, operation in the spectral domain corresponds to the product of a complex exponential by the spectrum of the signal so here we see 
x2 the spectrum and the complex exponential corresponding to that and then this complex exponential becomes part of the DFT of this x1 therefore we have the DFT of x1 and we get this product of the DFT of the x1 signal with the DFT of x2 signal and like most properties uh, this is a reversible uh, uh, property so that means that if we multiply two signals in the time domain it also corresponds to convolving the two spectrum in the frequency domain let's show these two uh, these two views of this property so for example if uh, we multiply two signals and this is an example of this multiplication and the corresponding um, um, uh, convolution in the frequency domain so here we start with two signals x1 x2 we have the DFT of these two only we're showing the, the magnitude spectrum and we see clearly the magnitude spectrum of these two signals these are even and real uh, functions so we see these even uh, symmetries and then uh, this uh, spectrum can be uh, convolved so if we convolve these two spectra uh, we see this on the right hand this is the convolution of these two spectra uh, which results into, uh, into this shape but the same shape can be obtained by multiplying the two signals multiplying x1 by x2 and then taking the DFT the result is exactly the same and we can show another example uh, which is very common in, the, in filtering uh, this is an example of uh, filtering uh, a sound, in this case a uh, sound of uh, the ocean, by an impulse response. Uh, first let's hear the two signals. Okay, so this is a sound of a very, uh, of an ocean sound, so it's a very noisy type of signal. And then uh, we can hear the impulse, uh, this. Okay, so it's a tiny sound, uh, it's an impulse response of a space and uh, we can uh, then convolve the two uh, uh, to get the filtering operation, this is the standard thing and, but uh, with, uh, in the context of the DFT uh, we can see the DFT of the ocean sound, uh, capital X1 and the DFT of the second sound, X2 and then uh, this idea of convolution can be done by multiplying these uh, two spectra. So on the right hand bottom we can see the product of these two spectra and on the left hand we see the DFT of the convolution of the two input signals. Okay, so basically that means that filtering can be accomplished both in the time domain by convolving two signals or in the frequency domain by multiplying the two spectra and that's quite a very convenient uh, property that, uh, to, that we can take advantage of on the DFT. Okay, so uh, you can find uh, quite a bit of information about these things uh, in Wikipedia and especially in Julius website uh, there is a very detailed uh, explanation of all these properties and the proofs uh, the sounds I played come from Freesound and of course uh, all these uh, is available uh, under uh, all these open licenses. So this is all for today. Uh, in order to understand the DFT in more real situations we have gone uh, through some of its properties. In the second part uh, of this lecture we will continue with uh, some more properties. So I hope to see you then. Thank you for your attention.